Welcome, everybody. This is the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform uh, General Development bi-weekly call, and this is June 22nd. Uh, my name is Esa Jovanen. I will be your host today. Uh, typical host David Warner is actually at the European Power Platform Conference uh, at Dublin, so couldn't join today. Uh, he has other commitments over there, so that's why I'm taking over, which is completely fine. Historically, actually, I, I think I still have presented this call more often than David, um, because we have been having this call for, I think, 10 years pretty soon. So. Um, for a long, 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 long time. Um, so, but anyway, so that's a separate discussion. Uh, so let's actually get moving on uh, forward on today's topic. So today uh, we'll go through again and to typical set of uh, updates across the different projects and assets, what we have available for you to take advantage. Uh, we also go through what are the latest on the sample side, uh, and then we'll take to get a mode picture. Uh, for those who are willing to enable the video, we'll, we'll set that one up as well. And hopefully this time it will not pixelate uh, too much. And then we'll have the actual stars of the day. So Samir is going to start by create and publish your first power virtual agent in less than 15 minutes. The demo slot is 15 minutes max, so it will be definitely less than 15 minutes, right, Samir? Now, and then Kasper Pool Larsen uh, is going to follow up on trimming SharePoint file versions to reduce storage cost. Um, this is actually a really interesting topic. Uh, I think we get a bit better on the SharePoint Online and Microsoft 365 on this in the future. But at some point, we actually had a serious problem where uh, every single storage was a full copy of the file. And, and then whenever you save a file, it generated a new file copy and that the storage was uh, costly and all of that stuff. So it's a, it's a really interesting topic to actually go through as well. So looking forward. And then Todd Clint is going to show using ChatGPT or your favorite AI to speed up PowerShell development. That's really, really cool as well. Looking forward. Now, um, as we get started on uh, going through the slides, so we always show this slide, which is all of the different assets which we have available for you to take advantage. So we do have our YouTube channel where we publish uh, Microsoft 365 Power Platform videos every single day. So something new actually published over there. And that's demos and community call recordings like this community call recording will be published within that channel. So please subscribe uh, and you will know when there's new content available. We also have a relatively new LinkedIn group. LinkedIn group uh, this is a group, so you can actually share your findings and we can have a discussion uh, on what are you sharing uh, with other people in the community. We also have a lot of open source assets available, but as it might be a bit difficult to find the relevant asset for you, uh, we actually have these sample galleries and they're a really, really convenient way to find the relevant sample for you to get started. So the baseline rule is don't start from scratch. Go to the sample gallery, get some inspiration, get some ideas, get maybe some code to reuse uh, within your solution, and then you will uh, increase your own productivity. If you're wondering that there's too many URLs to remember, luckily AKMS forward slash community format slash home is the one URL where you find all of these assets and much, much, much more. Now, we do have quite a lot of these community calls. We have two series on every single week. So we have an 8 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesdays, which is the Microsoft Presenters call uh, happening uh, there, which will be, however, on summer break in July. So last call will be next Tuesday, and then we will be back on 22nd of August. And this is mainly because Microsoft Presenters will have also time uh, away uh, from the work, uh, and we would have a difficult time of actually filling the agenda slots. Then we have the Power Platform a monthly community community call actually happened yesterday. A lot of, lot of attendees there as well. We have the Office Science monthly community call, and then we have our 7 a.m. Thursday series, which is either this call, which is Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community call, or the Viva Connection and SharePoint framework call. Now, the intention here is not for you to join on all of these calls. It's basically uh, check the agendas from the meetup or, or join those calls where the topics are interesting for you, and double check the recordings afterwards. That's the easiest way to stay up to date. Now, as in those calls, we're looking into always community presenters um, and we welcome you to, to do demos within this course that's a great 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 way of for example getting an MVP status within the uh, within these topics or areas uh, do a few of these demos and we will acknowledge that as part of the contributions within the MVP sign uh, everybody is welcome we will help you to set up those demos as well as needed so AKMS forward just community request demo uh, fill in the form we'll get you queued up Next Tuesday, as mentioned, is the last call on the 8 a.m. Tuesday series, and we'll have Bob German, Seb Seb Sebastian Levert, and Paolo Pialorosi doing demos over there. This time, a bit more on the Microsoft 365, but it's always a mix of Microsoft 365 and Power Platform topics because it's the unified Microsoft Cloud, um, and it's always the better to get a story. Now, 
We also have our Sharing is Caring initiative. I'm just double checking Hugo is not on the call. Nope, Hugo is also today uh, away. So um, as you're wondering on how to get started on maybe preparing for demos of those uh, community calls or how do you use the samples or how do you get started on writing for the web or how do you build uh, experiences for Power Platform, we have our Sharing is Caring initiative. And this is a really cool uh, uh, setup. Uh, we have calls and hand, we're basically helping you to get started on different topics. And there's more and more calls getting scheduled and it might be again a bit slower on summertime uh, but we're looking into stepping up the game yeah, it's definitely in august share akms forward slash caring is caring is where you can find a relevant uh, setup uh, which is available as you then uh, hopefully prepare yourself to contribute for example on sample side we want to acknowledge you so if you have contributed on samples if you had done a community call demo we want to acknowledge that or if you have built independent publicized connectors as an example we want to give you a badge those are a great great way of getting uh, showcasing what you have contributed for other people in the community but you have to sign up so go, go to akms forward slash community recognition so we know who you are and what you've done and then we get you to a badge uh, awarded now let's then go to the project uh, updates and let's start with the BMP.NET library uh, with Bert. Thank you, Vesa. Um, so for the BMP.NET libraries, uh, we have the two libraries, the BMP framework being the older one, cross decay the new one. For BMP framework, actually nothing happened in the last two weeks, uh, which is fine because um, I think the main It's complete. It's ready. It's complete. It's it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, the main investments are in the cross decay any, anyhow. <laughs> And for that, we had a couple of changes. Uh, Jack Stanger did some uh, fixes for uh, kind of enabling to delete role assignments if you get them by ID. The deletion didn't work, uh, so that's fixed by him. So thank you, Jack. And then we had a couple of uh, smaller uh, uh, updates. Um, we support now list item version deletion. So you can go in and delete an older list item version. Uh, we have some su support for subsites where things where we used to make a graph call and didn't correctly create the actual site ID and, and uh, always kind of defaulted to the root site. That's being fixed and that, for example, is used to uh, add the content type from the hub to a document library in a subsite, just as an example. And finally, um, we now have like a connect to a hub site uh, in the admin library. Now you wonder like, why do you need that? Because you already had that. Now, if connecting to an hub requires approval, like you can configure, um, then you need to use this tenant level connect to hub site to uh, bypass the approval. If you want to programmatically join your site to that hub. And with that, uh, let's move to Gautam for PowerShell. Thank you all. Sounds good. I have to call out. It's no longer 45 billion requests in a month. It's is yeah. actually 48 billion requests 48. in a month, 0. which 6, is 5, absolutely yeah. mind boggling <laughs> a number. But let's go to Kautam related on PMP PowerShell. Okay, hey, thanks. Thanks, Vesa. Thanks, Paul. Uh, in PMP PowerShell, yep, uh, in the past two weeks, we added quite a lot of commandlets. So not one, not two, not three, but 15 more commandlets. So I'm not going to read out all of them here for you, but a lot of them are related to sharing of the files and the folders. So when you click on files and when you want to click or share a folder and then you open the command bar there is a share option and we added all of these options come uh, programmatically so uh, if you want to share it anonymously or whether in the same organization or whether you want to invite a user or share it with a specific list of users everything is now available via powershell commandlet near you uh, besides that we also added uh, three new commands uh, related to list item version which is also uh, quite uh, impressive as well uh, this was a super amazing contribution from the community so yep uh, we also improved the pn P core uh, graph based command lets error messages that are going to happen. So, you know, command lets error out sometimes. So, we improve that. Uh, yeah, special shout out to Bert. So, in couple of these command lets, we had a weird uh, date time issue. Uh, and yeah, uh, we managed to fix that. And then we made it available for all of you guys to use. So, yeah, that's pretty much from my end. Over to you, Visa. Excellent. Thank you, Gautam. And for the 5 billion requests in this site, this, this number are just absolutely mind bubbling. Now let's go to then to the Yo team. So I will cover this one, this one, double checking just on the attendance. Yes, that is the case. So on the Yo teams, uh, that's a bit more classic uh, uh, model on the tooling for creating uh, Teams applications, uh, still completely supported by the community. And the latest version is 4.1. Uh, looking into, team is looking into doing a 4.2 release where they're improving capabilities. So if you build something, 
betting on using their teams, there's going to be future improvements in here. And the team is looking also alternative other options to improve the tooling. Feedback is super critical, so do let us know uh, how that tooling should be evolved. Now, the, a bit newer tooling for Teams development uh, is then also the Microsoft Teams Toolkit. And John is here to talk about what's the latest over there. Thanks, Vanessa. Yep, uh, Teams Toolkit, so the uh, point 0.1 release is available now um, for the 5.0 series, and that's uh, all bug fixes. So there's a lot of um, quality of life improvements there for some stuff folks were hitting as they upgraded to V5. So take a look at the change log there. It's on GitHub. Or if you need a link, I will post it after I talk about this. And just a reminder, if you haven't, the V5 series is about using dev tunnels. Um, so we have include our own tunneling solution there, and there's automation tasks, there's new samples, you can use code spaces. And if you have any feedback or want to chat, about what we should do next, uh, there's an AKMS link there you can uh, schedule some time with me. Thank you. Excellent. And that's a really, really, really good point. I just want to call out what John said. You will get to schedule time with John to tell him the feedback related on Teams development, and that team actually wants that. So that is a great opportunity to take advantage of that. Now, on the Microsoft Craft Toolkit, I think we don't have Seb on the call. I'm just watching the list of people. No, we don't. Uh, in here, uh, the latest version is 2.11.1, uh, which is the latest stable release intended to be used in the production. The 3.0 or a release candidate uh, is also available. That was announced last week. And, and the team is looking potentially even rolling out stuff, uh, new updates in this week or uh, maybe GA next week. So things are happening uh, within upcoming weeks uh, for the version 3.0. Uh, SAP is also showing uh, the search component next Tuesday within the community call. Uh, so do join on there to know what are the latest capabilities within the uh, craft toolkit side as well. And of course, feedback is super critical. Now let's then jump uh, on Jocelyn related on independent connectors. And these are growing so much cool stuff. I know, they are growing so quickly, Vanessa. I feel like I just made the 1,000 announcement and now we're already at 1,048. We are like halfway to the next 100. It's so, so crazy. But thank you to all of our publishers for making this a reality. We are now at even more independent publisher connectors than ones made by first party as if within Microsoft. And as Vanessa mentioned, we have badges. If you guys really, really love connector content and want to learn more with me, scan that QR code and the link will also be in the chat to join my connector specific labs call. The other thing that I wanted to bring up is in case you missed it at build, uh, Power Platform Connectors will actually part of, be part of the main fuel of AI for the M365 Copilot. So we're really excited about enabling all of these many, many, many solutions across all of these awesome APIs. If you're an existing publisher, check your email for an email from me. Like last week, we want to know your feedback and what you're excited for about enabling these plugin scenarios. And also, in the sake of community, I just wanted to share with you guys that our certification PM and engineer, Amjad and Shrikanth, will be leaving the connector team at the end of the month. We're super sad to see them go, but I'll be also put their links in the chat as well for you guys to connect with them. As always, please reach out to me with any feedback or questions on how to get started in the connector world. Thank you all. Excellent. Thank you, Jocelyn. Really, really, really cool stuff. And then let's actually quickly recap what's happening on the script samples. Uh, Paul, your turn. Yeah, so group samples, if you didn't know what it is, is a, a, a repository for storing uh, PowerShell scripts for various tools. So for PMP PowerShell, Microsoft Graph, SPO Management Shell, the CLI for M365. Um, it pretty much it's unlimited. So if there is a type of sample that doesn't fit that category, then, then reach out to me. I, I will adjust the site accordingly. Now we've got some new scenarios, which is super cool from our, uh, our wonderful contributors. So we've got copy SharePoint list to another site by Adam Walczyk. Uh, we've We've got uh, a graph uh, SDK sample from uh, Brad Cheney for deactivating user licenses. We've got uh, three new uh, update, updates that includes now the CLI for M365, so associate form customizer extension with list libraries from Ganache Snap. Uh, we've also got uh, a file version trimmer has now got a CLI version from Nandeep Nashan, and then we've got uh, remove delete option on a document library again from Ganache Snap, so which is super cool. And then we've got another updated scenario by uh, Robert Ellis, which is resetting the uh, the file permission to unique inheritance, which is super, super cool. So thank you very much. Uh, don't forget to register for a badge. Uh, we do have now two and three star badges for those lovely, wonderful uh, repeat 
contributors so you can get recognized for your hard work and i have some other other good news is uh pb script samples has now just crossed its second birthday which is super super cool so that, that makes me very happy and and i feel like i want to eat that cake right now so um uh if you need any help with getting started then please reach out and uh, i'd be i'd be more than happy to to help you say linkedin or, or twitter and if you want to get started with uh, uh, contributions quicker then i've got powershell script to uh, to help you out there as well but thank you very much for your amazing contributions i'm back to you better excellent thank you thank you paul on that one really really cool to say that and two year anniversary that's really really cool way now uh let's go to quickly also the microsoft team samples in this site uh the latest sample is the bookmark bot from asia hassan uh, we're looking into getting asia also to be a, a demo in this one uh within the uh, within the course as well so really really cool stuff so we do welcome also microsoft team samples if you're building something cool please do contribute and we're also partnering right now with the cloud advocate team Team, uh, or related on Teams hackathon samples and getting a lot of those queued up for the demos within the community call. So looking forward on seeing a lot of that awesome stuff uh, within the call as well. And then uh, we also welcome Power Platform samples. So making sure that people can also find uh, Power Platform samples on Power Apps, Power Connections, uh, Power BI and all of that stuff. And there's a lot of them already available and you can find all of those at AKMS Power Platform sam uh, uh, samples. And uh, that's the sample gallery uh, where you can find what uh, have been done. These are great for in inspiration uh, if nothing else and of course you can download them you can access them you can reuse them uh, any way you want now before we actually go to the demos of today let's do a quick crew photo with those who are willing to enable the camera right now we're not yet pixelated uh, so let's see how this goes this time um, so hopefully it will deal with not going pixelated i'm not going to enable my camera just in case um so avoiding that pixelation and we're looking good we are looking good we have 50 seats in the room uh, and we have like one 200 people right now in the call a few more seats few more seats few more seats we're not yet recording i think that's the last row a lot of familiar faces there as well really really cool i will put the recording on and let's do some hand waving because we are doing maxing the room two, one, and here we go. And excellent, Gautam, you're doing exactly what Sepp is doing on the slides. Really, really good. And Todis as well on the back row. Awesome stuff. <laughs> we'll crap a GIF animation out of that. So really, really cool. And it didn't get pixelated today. So that's actually new, great news. So it's it's much more visible, a better quality as we share that. Now, then let's go to the actual stars of today, um, which are Samir, Kasper, and Todd. And let's start with Samir, related on uh, Power Virtual Agents and how we can create those in less than 15 minutes. That's really fast and really cool. Thank you, Vesa. Actually, it was 30 minutes. I was hoping uh, I could uh, squeeze that in the 15 minutes, but um, let's do that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> right, OK, so um, a quick introduction about myself. Today, we're going to talk about Power Virtual Agents, and I'm going to try to build uh, an HR uh, Power Virtual Agent chatbot and publish that to Teams in 15 minutes, less than 15 minutes. Uh, basically, I'm, I've been working with Microsoft Technologies for over 13 years now. I have 18 Microsoft certifications covering from C Sharp, SQL Server, all the, the old good stuff to the most modern one, uh, Power Platform, uh, SharePoint, and so on. Uh, I blog on a regular basis or try to. Uh, you can hit me on Twitter or uh, follow me on my, on my blog. Um, now, because we don't have enough time, enough about myself, and let's jump to the demo. Uh, I'm going to try to to go quickly. With this. So basically to create Power Virtual Agent, uh, you have two options. You can either uh, add the Power Virtual Agent application to uh, to Teams, or you can just navigate uh, so search for Power Virtual Agent, navigate to the main site. Uh, you can create a uh, account with a free trial. Basically, I have my own account. I think I have one day left for this trial, which is enough for the demo. Uh, this is the landing page. When you, you register or log, uh, this is where, where you will land. Uh, on the left side, you have a simple menu where you can access your chatbot, and this is the list of all the, the bots I have. To create a new chatbot, it's as simple as going to the top left uh, navigation menu, and uh, you, you get this, this wizard. It's very simple. Uh, bot name, let's say Ask HR. I'm going to call it Ask HR, which is more than enough. Create. So this will spend for, for a minute, create different entities, different models that the, the bot will, uh, will require. And this is the area where you're going to configure and define the logic of your bot and the way it's going to interact with uh, with your users. Uh, by default, it's going to create different different topics and entities for us. We're going to have a look quickly at, at those. So these are out of the box things like when you say hi to the bot, what it's going to say, greetings, goodbye. And these are sample to topics. 
you can turn off or decide to delete topics if you want. So topics is kind of uh, a subject where you're going to interact with the with the bot. You can you're going to create your logic. Uh, I'm going to keep the thank you, the greetings, the, the goodbye topic, and uh, I will create my first new topic for this chatbot. Uh, and let's say I'm going to call this something related to to, uh, to salary. So let's call it salary. Basically, the topic needs to have a name and couple of uh, one or a uh, couple of trigger phases. So the trigger phases are uh, what will kind of direct the power virtual agent to to this section of the bot. So trigger phases can be things like, uh, let's say salary. I'm going to put a couple of uh, trigger phases here, payslip, uh, payment, I don't know. Um, uh, and then, yeah, payslip. Let's say we have four trigger phases. Now, you're going to create the logic. It, uh, you have like power virtual agent design environment where you're going to de define your logic and it, it it's kind of similar to what uh, you are used to use with the uh, power automate so basically you're going to have a sequence uh, of actions or uh, things that you can add in your power virtual uh, agent chatbot logic so in my case let's say this is the trigger phase this is what will trigger uh, this topic after this i can either send a message to the user or ask a question to gather some information from the end user uh, i can also uh, send an adaptive card let's say I'm going to send a message back here and say, OK, thank you for querying about uh, pay slips or salary. Um, how nice. Right, so this is a simple message. After this, I'm going to follow it by ask a question. Let's say, um, please choose one of ordering options. And uh, here I'm going to give different options to the user. So let's say first uh, I want to either download my payslip. OK, the second option would be discuss salary increase. Is uh, last thing, let's say contact HR. All right, so. As you can see, the fact that I have provided uh, this section with three options, it's going to open three branches for me, and each one can have different uh, different logic uh, underneath. By default, the the, uh, the the option selected by the user will be saved in a variable. PVA will call it var one, var two, but let's give it a better name here. So let's say uh, payslip sub section. Whatever. Yeah. Right. Okay. So um, let's say. To download a uh, payslip, I know that there is an HR internal system where the user can go and download their, uh, their payslips, and I can reply with a message, say, if you have selected, I want to download my payslip, I can say, you can just log to, I don't know, XYZ system, you can provide the link here if you want. Um, yeah. And download and Select the month and click download. All right, so that's in case you want uh, to know how to download the payslip. Second thing, let's say you want to uh, to discuss how you can uh, discuss salary increase. Same thing. Um, we can also insert images here. We can have a rich text formatted uh, content. Um, so you can also have adaptive cards, but we're going to keep it simple for today. So let's say. It's uh, salary increase, we're going to reply by saying salary increases have to be discussed and requested by line managers. You get the idea. Managers, please start. Uh, yeah, I don't know, have a word with your manager, whatever uh, word with your manager. Um, Lastly, uh, contact HR, and here we can we can ask for a couple of information. We can uh, pull the information from the user and send those uh, details to the power of, uh, power automate, let's say, which can either create a ticket on behalf of the user or send the email or anything like that. But we can say, okay, ask question. Let's say, yeah. um, please provide. Uh, I don't know. Let's say let, let's be more. Uh, tell me more about a request, and this can be uh, instead of being a multi uh, multi option uh, or multi choice is going to be a text text field. In which case we're going to take the user entire response, and we're going to say uh, this. We're going to call this variable. Um, 
request details. Um, we can ask another question. Or that, that that's enough for now. Um, so yeah, basically we created a simple uh, topic which provides user with three options based on what they have. Uh, the user uh, has selected. Then either say a one, then one, or ask for more information. We can do more uh, with this um, with this section here. So, but for now, let's save this just to test it quickly. As you can see on the left side, you have this uh, chart window where you can test your uh, bot and debug it in, in real time. So if I say salary here on this window, I can see kind of real time debug and I know which step my uh, my bot is in. Um, again, after this, we said, OK, please choose one of the following options. And I'm giving the, the user three different options. Uh, let's say I want to download my payslip. And that's the section, the message I wanted to to send back to the user. So the link to to, to the HR system or whatever, and and so on. So um, you can spend a lot of time here. The the idea is that you should start simple with uh, a Power Virtual Agent with one or two uh, topics, and then deploy that. That after which you can include uh, new topics or uh, based on the feedback or the analytics of the PVA, you can uh, enhance, you can uh, refine the, uh, the the way your your PVA will uh, will answer. But um, yeah, this is just a simple example of how you can start designing your PVA. Um, you can test it in real time. Uh, if you're not happy with this, you can uh, go back and modify it at any time. Uh, I will save this, this topic. I can create another topic quickly. Let's say the other topic will be called absence. Or I don't know, maternity leave. Uh, maternity leave to be more precise. Trigger will be, I don't know, uh, things like maternity. Pregnancy, I don't know. Uh, paternity, maybe. And you get you get the idea. Same thing. So you can ask questions. You can ask send messages. Uh, adaptive car, adaptive cards. Uh, uh, you can call an action. Um, something here. Let's let's. Uh, you're gonna start with um, with a nice message. Um, gonna put an image here quickly. Okay. You can you can still use uh, use bank if if you prefer. This is Microsoft event, so they won't they could get that image to work. Right. So in the message I can say congratulations. Um and I want you to know uh yeah. Uh please provide me with uh, Details about your maternity leave. Maternity leave request. Let's say here we want to to know the start date and date, and that that's all. Just to send email to the manager. Okay, so we can ask a question. When to start your maternity leave? In terms of data types, you have uh yeah we've seen you can have multiple choices. Uh, you can have text field or um, a kind of an entire user entire response. You can uh, have other other types like age, Boolean, email address, date, and so on. So in our case, we're going to use date. And let's say this, we're going to call it eternity start. Next one, are you planning to return? Work. It will be maternity and um, from here we can call an action if you want. We have two information. We have the logged in user. We have uh, the start and 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 uh, end date. We can from here call uh, create flow or call one of the existing flows. Um, if you want to create flow, uh, simply you're gonna get those inputs. Same in the same way you get uh, information from Power Apps passed into uh, Power Automate. Um, you have some inputs that your uh, your flow is expected from uh, from PVA and. Uh, eventually, you can send some information back after pro doing the processing. But basically, yeah, you define the, the inputs. You do whatever you want, whether it's raising a ticket or sending an email or calling an API. You, you can do whatever you want. You are in, in Power uh, Automate. Uh, it's now an environment, so you can do whatever you want. And uh, yeah, optional, you can send uh, some some responses back. Um, the good thing about PVA, which I really like, the fact that you divide your topics, uh, uh, um, you create different different topics. PVA. It's smart enough to jump from this chart section here. I can say from yeah, let's start with um, say user comes here and say I want to download 
uh, download my payslip. So this is kind of a choice in the payslip uh, topic. So PVA should be smart enough to direct the user to, to that specific topic and jump the, the, the first question. So the choices and, and everything. So as you can see here, it directs me directly to, to the answer instead of going to and saying, OK, thank you for querying about um, salaries or payslip, choose one of those options. So it kind of points the user in the right place uh, automatically. Uh, if if I wanted to say uh, maternity leave just following this question, PVA should switch auto automatically to the second topic and goes to uh, to, to the section um, I, I have defined. So it doesn't have to be kind of sequential processing. Uh, PVA will detect what you, what you want and try to match that even if it's kind of subsection of a topic. Right, so that's fine. As you can you can imagine, you can play with this and define it as you want. Now, Let's say we're happy with uh, with this uh, PVA. It it can it can answer questions about payslips or maternity leave. But now the most important part is to publish the, the PVA. The good thing is that when you build the PVA, you can publish it to different uh, platforms. So it can be uh, published to Teams, uh, Facebook, uh, Skype, if you if you're still using that, uh, or your website. Um, but for today, probably we're gonna just look at uh, publishing to to Teams. So the first thing is to publish the change. So this will, um, yeah, topic contains one error. Let, let me go back. Yeah, it looks like this one has an error. Uh, sorry, I, I've chosen the wrong the wrong data type here. So let's say date, right. Then I go back to publish. So publish. Right. So once um, the changes have been published, now you go to the, the to the channels and you you will enable the one uh, you want to use. So for today's demo, it's going to be Microsoft Teams. Basically, what will happen here is that um, this environment will create a Microsoft Teams custom application which contains uh, uh, one tab, which is this this chatbot. Um, so I'm going to turn on Teams. You have the option of customizing your bot before pub before publishing that to to Teams. So you can say the details here. You can change the icon if you want. Uh, I think I have an icon for that. So let's use this robot here. And in terms of color, I'm gonna use orange. I don't know why, but it's just orange for today. Uh, short description: It can be uh, HR chatbot, and you can provide long description here. That's fine. I'm gonna leave it as it is. Uh, once I save, it's gonna kind of re regenerate the manifest for the application and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, let me check if I've not missed anything here. Yes, if if you are a Microsoft partner, you can provide your MPN details here, some details about uh, yeah, links to privacy statement and so on. So if you've done uh, Teams custom applications, you, you know what these mean, but you don't have to spend a lot of time here. Uh, you can leave them as they are. Right, so let's try to publish this to Teams. Um, okay. Right. Sorry, I'm in an environment where I need admin approval for that. Fish. So, um, yeah, if you want to to share uh, the bot to your colleague just for kind of internal review or, or so on, you can uh, you can use a demo website uh, which is hosted in uh, um, Azure. It's just an Azure website which hosts your your bot here. This is a link you can share with your colleagues. But um, yeah, go back to Teams quickly. Uh, open bot. It opens in in Teams as a Teams application, and this is the. the the exact so if I say download uh payslip. Sorry, sometimes yeah. yeah. So you got you got the idea. So you got the same uh, experience as in the browser or in the demo website. Um sorry. Uh, there we go. Uh I think that's that's it for me. So excellent uh, in terms of time, no, this is uh, yeah, over to you. Sorry. Yeah, thank you, Samarif. Really, really cool. You didn't actually do one PVA, you did two, and which is really, really cool, uh, with pretty much in 15 minutes. So so even though we cut your timing a bit, uh, so that was really, really cool, uh, and, and a great uh, storytelling on, on what's available within the PVA. 
really, really cool. Um, and you don't need to understand coding. You can just draw those uh, business processes directly in the BVA UX. Let's then jump on Casper uh, to talk about trimming SharePoint file versions to reduce storage costs. I guess we are using PowerShell in this one as well, right, Casper? Well, it depends on uh, what you one. prefer. Yeah, that's fair. Um, that is fair. <laughs> because, Sorry. Yeah, we Take have it. both options now. Uh, that yes. was actually just uh, what the um, Gautam showed us that we have a, the version for CLI as well now. So, well, we'll take it from there. Everybody has their own uh, preferences. So, yeah. the agenda for, for this uh, speak is that um, we can quickly walk into what the uh, SharePoint storage really is, how we calculate it, what it costs, and how we can uh, minimize it because it, it can be expensive. Uh, well, just my contact info if you need to contact me. So, uh, Basically, SharePoint storage is something that you get when you spin up a new tenant. You get one uh, terabyte of storage for free, as well as 10 gigabytes of uh, storage per licensed user. And that's what you have to deal with because that's the space allotted to you by Microsoft uh, for free. But how do we calculate it? Because as was mentioned before, we have um, we had some problems in the past where storage was uh, every file had to be stored uh, by themselves and that's actually the way it's calculated for Microsoft uh, for SharePoint storage as well if we have a 10 megabyte file we have 10 versions uh, 8 meter versions and 10 minor, minor versions that will if you calculate it will come up to about 1000 megabytes as far as storage goes how much it takes on how, to, how much space it takes up on the Microsoft's internal uh, servers on the hard disks we don't know, and honestly, it doesn't really matter because this is what we pay for. How much is uh, take uh, space it takes on Microsoft servers is not none of our business. So it's correct that we use sharding on the on the on the on the storage uh, with Microsoft, but uh, well, we might see some changes for in that area uh, down the line. But for the time being, that's the way uh, we calculate it. If you need additional space, uh, storage space, uh, it will be like 20 cents per gigabyte per month. That's the, the list price, what we have. And the example I showed you right before where we had this uh, one, um, we have a single file that was 10 megabyte and we had a lot of uh, versions on that one. That will actually take up uh, one gigabyte by itself and that's per month. So if you have a lot of uh, content and we saw that uh, I think it was uh, such an Adela the other day uh, that was how much storage was actually uh, used in in uh, Microsoft 365. So there's a lot of uh, of uh, files stored around here. So uh, it can be expensive, especially if your backup system, who your whoever your backup provider is, if they calculate their storage the same way as Microsoft do, then it might get, get kind of expensive. So how can we minimize this in order to keep uh, our costs in check? And uh, there's two basic versions. So you can do something proactive and you can do something reactive. As far as um, proactive measures goes, well, you can of course set up a retention policy that will actually delete your sites and your files once they are no longer um, relevant or to prevent scroll, also for I, mean, I think on the American market, it's pretty common to to make sure that it's deleted so it can't be used against you in a court of law. Um, but the other version, uh, other uh, measure we can take right away, I guess there's more than this, but this is the the, the easy one, the low hanging fruits, is to have a look at how many versions are stored by default. I'm not claiming that Microsoft are neither stupid nor evil, but they have set a, a default as 500 versions. And I think that's just to be absolutely sure that no matter how often you modify your file and how many versions you have, you can always return to a previously known good state. So therefore, they have, I guess, been very conservative and make sure that 500 versions is the default. I've not yet seen a customer uh, that wasn't completely OK with lowering this to about 50 or 100. Uh, but it might depend on your industry if you actually have to keep all those versions um, uh, on your tenant. Another way to deal with it is to make sure that we actually get rid of the old versions 
once the files have uh, the, the sites that they are stored on um, can be uh, either archived or uh, is out of use or just basically just trimming it from time to time because we we have a lot of files that contains a lot of versions and perhaps we don't really need them and uh, that's where we have um, some scripts where we can actually calculate how much space that we could save if we decide to say we just want to have uh, 50 versions of each file um, we can just set this script to calculate how much space that we can actually free up and once we have decided that this is the setup that we want. We can have, um, we will, you can use this uh, five version trimmer that we have, which is also in the PNP script samples uh, repository. So, as I, uh, Vince, I usually don't have to say this time th that we can zoom in a bit. I should have uh, the code in a pretty good uh, zoom factor. Basically, you just set up your uh, script so you can see all the files by using your uh, app registration. You define how many files you want to retain. It can, of course, depend if it's some if you have different classes of content, different classes of, of site collections and libraries, for instance. Some you might be really aggressive and say, yeah, I just want the last major one. That's fine by me. So I can really trim that down. And some you will really uh, not uh, trim that uh, hard. So that's up to you to define that for your different classes of, uh, of content. Then we have down here, well, we can, of course, just use a, um, an iterator that just take all of your files or some of your files or whatever you, uh, how you prefer to use it. But as soon as, as, as when we have a site collection that we want to, to, uh, to do something about, we'll just calculate how much space is actually there right now. And then we'll call the delete versions function, which will uh, trim down all of the existing um, a key tr a trim down the, that uh, file to make sure that we only have the set, a certain set of uh, versions left. Uh, the real hero in this setup is the remove PMP files version uh, from uh, PowerShell, uh, PMP PowerShell, uh, because it will actually delete the versions. Some people have in the in the past have tried to say, well, I have my library here. I have a number of files. I have, in this case, I have 20 different versions on this file, on this file. so I'll just lower um, the number of, uh, of versions in my library to 10, and then I'll be fine. Uh, sorry, that's just not the way it works. It will prevent you from getting above 10 versions for that file, but all the old, old versions will still be there. You don't, they, they are not deleted when you change the default setting. So you will have to do that uh, to to uh, you have to call this uh, uh, this PowerShell uh, function to to make sure that we trim down uh, all of the old content. And uh, of course, in the script samples, you have a lot of uh, funny uh, stuff you can use. You can use the file trimmer. This is the one I have here, and also uh, different versions on uh, how you can calculate how much space you can save. And you also have added. <laughs> Additional um, PowerShell scripts that can actually uh, prove it, because I, and initially I didn't really believe this, so I used the, these two scripts to make sure that um, I've comp I, I put some content into one of my site collections, and then I waited uh, 24 to 48 hours, and then I could see in my uh, SharePoint admin uh, center that how much space was actually consumed by those files, and then I can make sure that I could calculate how much uh, space was actually taken. And now I know for sure that it's each version of each file, no matter whether it's a major version or a minor version, but that's the way it's calculated. So uh, that's a real hero on uh, on this uh, in this show, is that uh, we can actually delete those old uh, versions. So if you need to need know more, uh, you can either uh, look in the script samples or you can uh, have a look on the article I made on this as well. Or you can just reach out and uh, give me a shout. That should be it. That was pretty short and uh, on the point, I guess. Yep. Yeah.
really, really good. Thank you, Casper. Uh, awesome, awesome stuff and super, super useful for a lot of, lot of customers as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you for the great demo. Now, from a timing perspective, let's move into Todd. I guess we are pretty much on a schedule. Uh, if Todd can keep this in 12 minutes or so, that would be optimal, <laughs> so I can close up. But Not... I know that you can talk eight hours if needed. I, yes, yeah, we, on yeah, anything. We've known each other for quite a few years already. So. <laughs> All right, so I will make this. Um, so like Vesa said, I'm going to be doing my best micro man. Uh, I'm going to be talking fast, uh, trying to get as much stuff in as I can. Y'all have me in teams. Feel free to reach out. I uh, would love to talk about any of this. Um, so this is my contact information. Y'all are bored of tears with who I am. Uh, the important thing is my email address there. If you have questions, reach out, hit me up on Twitter, whatever smoke signals. Uh, Y'all know how to get hold of me. So this is the quick agenda. I'm going to spend like a little bit talking about AI, not because I know a lot about AI, but I want to level set and just make sure we're all talking about the same things. Then I'm going to talk about a couple of the tools that I use. There are a bazillion tools out there. I currently use like two or three. That's the only one I'm going to talk about. The other ones are probably great. Uh, very smart, loved by one and all. They're just not the ones that have caught my eye. And then I'll uh, I'll show you a couple of things. And Paul, I remember on Tuesday, I told you I was going to give you a script sample. That will be in the the demos. So, so keep uh, keep on attention, keep your attention up. So what is AI, artificial intelligence? The field of AI is really big. There are a bunch of pick pieces of AI. We're only gonna talk about really three pieces of it. Uh, the natural language processing, the machine learning, and the neural nets. And I put the, the, the uh, uh, abbreviations in their initialisms just so we can see them. Um, so, Natural language processing is the ability for the AI to understand the messy human stuff that we put in. Uh, machine learning is AI's ability to take a corpus of things uh, with some humans showing it, you know, this is a picture of a dog, this is a picture of a dog, this isn't a picture of a dog. Give it a few of those sets and then it goes off and learns the rest on itself and then a human comes back later and adjusts it. And then neural networks is kind of how it pieces that together. Uh, I was listening to a podcast about uh, language a while back, and they were talking about the word network li literally means a work, like a work of art or whatever, that looks like a net. That is a network. Had never thought of it that way. But the neural networks are all the little pieces of things that the machine language knows and how it connects them. And that's how it's going to do some of the crazy stuff uh, that I'm going to show you here in a minute. The thing to keep in mind is for better or worse, AI learns like humans do. So it looks at things that other humans are doing and then tries to take a current situation and extrapolate from the things that it's seen uh, what the, the right thing is to do, depending on which humans it's learning from or sometimes it's just wrong. So that's the thing to keep in mind. Uh, that sometimes uh, AI is just not right, uh, but it does learn like humans. And it's funny because I've seen some criticism of AI, like especially Dolly, the the image thing. And it said, uh, hey, you know, all it does is it just, you know, steals other people's art and then changes a little bit and makes it its own. And I heard that and I'm like, that is every piece of art ever. That is every story that's ever been written, every painting that's ever been done. Every script I've ever written has been going out and looking at what other people have done, taking it and then changing it to be the thing that I need. So again, for better or for worse, that's what, uh, what AI is. And chat GPT, uh, the, the big daddy, all of them, essentially what it did is it read the internet in September of 2021, the whole thing. Um, and then a combination of machine learning and all that kind of stuff understood the internet in uh, uh, September of 2021. And that's what you get when you talk to it is what it, what it knew back then with a couple of exceptions. So how can AI help me and help you write better code? Well, I really like the nomenclature that GitHub and Microsoft use. Um, in that they call it co-pilot and that's really what it is it is it's sitting next to you you're still in charge you're still the pilot you still have to write the code and do whatever but it's sitting next to you helping you out and i think that's a really uh, a really great way to, to look at it, what it does for you and that's all of ai uh the way i think of it is kind of like my my gps and my car like i put my destination in and i'm roughly follow it but if my gps tells me to run off a, a cliff or something i usually take the wheel and, and i don't do that ai is the same way it, it's kind of your co-pilot um I've found that I get the best value from AI on a topic that I already know a little bit. So I use AI with PowerShell every day of the week, sometimes multiple day times in the day on the weekends. Uh, and it works great. And I've done some amazing things. I couldn't use AI to learn Python, for instance, or machine, uh, you know, assembly language or anything like that. You need to have some understanding of, of the product, the, the, the thing you're doing. 
for a few different reasons. Number one, when you're talking to AI, um, you need to be able to create good prompts. You need to be able to give it good things. And so prompts are the thing that you type and then it replies to you. So you need to be able to use uh, you know, the right terms and, and things like that uh, so that the AI has a chance of figuring out what, you, what you're going to do. The other thing is AI, like humans, they get stuff wrong. In the AI world, those are called hallucinations, which I think is just a hysterical word for it. Uh, but you need to know enough about the subject to know when you see a hallucination. Um, and the other thing is you need to you know, you need to do your own work. So there's recently a story here in the last couple of weeks of, of some lawyers in the United States that use ChatGP to write a summary for a case. And they just, you know, control A, control C, send it off. And it cited a whole bunch of stuff and made some great claims. The problem is uh, none of it was true. They didn't check anything. Uh, ChatGPT made the whole thing up. So uh, you got you to gotta understand what you're doing. Um, so what I found is that the best benefit comes from it being able to do thing, help you do things you could already do faster or iterate on them just a little bit, take them up uh, the next level. And if you learn one thing from this session, um, other than that I can talk really fast, it's that uh, you should never talk yourself out of asking an AI something. So people in the chat are talking about how it, you know they've tried stuff and it didn't work. There's no penalty for that. Like there's nobody judging you for that. Once, twice a week, I have some idea and I say, oh, I should ask ChatGPT about that. Nah, it's too convoluted. ChatGPT will never be able to make heads or tails of that. And then I talk myself into it. And once or twice a week, it does it. It figures it out. It just amazes me. And that's for a couple of reasons. Number one, the AI is really good. But number two, we've all heard of this rubber duck debugging where you have a rubber duck on your desk and you explain to it the problem. Just the thought of working through the question to ask the AI often jiggles through um, uh, the, the solution in your head. So that helps you out a lot. Um, so the other uh, mention in the chat room, that chat GPT is really good at making up PowerShell commands. Uh, it is chat GPT four is a little better than three and 3.5, but yeah, you definitely need to, uh, to be careful with it. Okay. So which tools do I use? I use two tools. I use GitHub Copilot and chat GPT. Uh, GitHub Copilot is inside of your IDE. I use it in VS code and it's kind of like the next evolution of IntelliSense or, or suggestions or things like that. Basically you start typing, it starts churning away and it suggests things. And if you like the thing it suggests, you hit tab. If you don't, you just keep typing and you ignore it. Uh, but it's basically just watching over your shoulder, seeing what you're doing. Um, it, it, it's got a lot of power. It's, it has access to GitHub, so it's, it's learning from that. It's looking inside of the document that you're in to see what it can figure out. It's also looking at the other documents you have open in your tabs. So it helps if you open up your whole project and it can kind of see uh, the whole picture. There's a really great GitHub study in here. I would love to spend time talking about it, but I don't have a, the, the, op, the opportunity to do it right now. Check that link out. The big thing is what that study proved, well showed, because you know GitHub did it, was that GitHub Copilot helps people do things they could already do about 50% faster and um, uh, more of them. So 78% were able to finish a thing with AI, uh, 70 were not. It costs about 10 bucks a month, which I know seems like, well, that's you know what I pay for YouTube or whatever. You will get your $10 a month back in the first week. If you're like me and a consultant and you bill by the hour, you'll get it in the first day. Uh, so, so don't be afraid to do that. So let's uh, take a quick look um okay so this is the thing there's an extension you want to install that extension over here uh and it's called github copilot you install that this is the little guy over here you'll see it working so if i do a new document it's not what i wanted if i do a new document okay oh it did work all right um, pick the language. PowerShell is not one of the like top languages that it uses, but it still understands it. It can still uh, do a bunch of stuff. So basically, you can do things like I can type, you know, connect to SharePoint online with PNP PowerShell. Hit return. You can see it down here churning. Now with this one, it's funny. So this is, the, you know, doing demos is scary. Doing demos with a non-deterministic thing like this is tough. Um, it's going to give me the wrong thing. It's going to give me the documentation, which is nice. Uh, but last week it was giving me the connection string. Um, so that wasn't helpful. Get all the lists in a SharePoint site. Ooh. Okay, good. Uh, but I don't like that. I don't like that. I want something else. Uh, get me all the non-hidden lists in a SharePoint site. 
There we go. So there's things like that. So you can see it cranking out the code for you. Um, it does that. And as you're typing code, um, it will, uh, you know, do it in the code. It will do it from comments. The other great thing is this helps you, uh, you know, have better comments on your code. And it's just not going to do that one. Thanks a lot, ChatGPT. All right. So let's go back to the slide because we got. Uh, so ChatGPT is more of a chat thing. Uh, I use it in a complement with, with a GitHub Copilot. I write some code, then I throw it in ChatGPT. Uh, ChatGPT, I absolutely just put crazy stuff in there. And so let me demo that here quick. And, and Paul, this is the code uh, that you will get. I'm going to end my slideshow here quick. So I can get to my window or ignore all that. Oh, there's all this one. Okay, so here's ChatGPT. I'm picking four. I'm picking that. So I'm going to put this uh, prompt in here. Write a function called fix SharePoint that uh, on a site using PowerShell, uh, PMP PowerShell. Have it look for a list called Shane Stinks. That's Shane Young. He was my uh, sidekick for a while. And create it if it's not there. Okay, so this is what it's going to do for me. And I think that's uh, big enough. Copy code. You're going to like that button because you just copy it back in. So it creates a function. So this is while this is churning through. Uh, and Paul, this is your demo that you can have. Um, this is one of the things I do. I write PowerShell, then I pop it in here, and I'm like, turn this into a function called blah. Uh, add a parameter, blah. Write me three examples, blah. And it just does it. So it takes the code that I would already write, elevates it up a little bit. So everything I write now takes pipeline input, is a function, has examples, and it takes me about two minutes at the end. Um, it's There's just nothing to it. So now not only does it write the code, it uh, explains it to me. Uh, this will end up in the site. So there we go. That is that. So let me get over. <laughs> I can't wait. So Shane is Shane was going to come in and, and watch this today, but he's busy with, uh, with a presentation on site. So I was, I was going to spring that one on him. Uh, that's 20 bucks a month. Uh, best 20 bucks I've spent, uh, in a long time. I, I write that check every month smiling. So again, there's your stuff. Uh, one minute left. Hit me up. I'd uh, love to chat about it. Vesa back to you. Excellent. Right on time. Uh, we'll, we'll probably close up within uh, exactly on the hour. So thank you, Samir. Thank you, Kasper. Thank you, Todd. Really, really cool. Uh, please uh, take advantage of our community call conversations. So for all of these presenters, they, they've been dedicated a space where you can start continuing discussions if you have questions after the call. Intention is not to use this chat after the call too much because again there's 1000 people within this chat and it's not a uh, let's say polite way of notifying everybody uh, on having random questions so let's centralize those questions in these locations now we also do have our uh, official uh, discord server and nowadays available for Microsoft 365 Power Platform community I was just checking this we already have more than 100 or 200 uh, uh, people uh, in this server as well. So a great way of ask, asking questions and helping others within a community. So to take advantage of that. Now, we want to improve this process. We want to improve this community course. We want to improve uh, what we do. And if something is missing, let us know. So please do take advantage uh, of a few minutes on filling in this form and to let us know how we can improve things. This call will be uh, shared within our YouTube channel within 24 hours. You cannot access the recording uh, from the chat, even though that would imply that you can. That does not work uh, outside of Microsoft employees. That's why it's getting processed within 24 hours. The next call is in July 6th. Uh, this Thursday call series will not go for a summer break. Only Tuesday 8 a.m. series will go for a summer break. So we'll be here every single Thursday, 7 a.m. Pacific time. But that's it for now. Thank you one more time for the presenters and thank you for the active discussion within the chat. And we'll be back next week. Have a great rest of the week uh, and let's stay in touch. Cheers. Bye bye.